A very good morning to each one of you. In compliance with the MCO, we continue to meet online. And so we welcome you wherever you are at this time, but especially we hope that you are at home. Today is Palm Sunday. I know you would love to be in church, to receive your palm crosses, even as we celebrate and commemorate together the event of today, an event that was to see our Lord walking, journeying into Jerusalem to his death. Saudara, saudari dalam Kristus, selamat pagi, selamat datang. Hari ini kita terus bertemu dan menyembah Tuhan secara online. Namun tidak apa, hari ini kita mengingati akan perjalanan Tuhan Yesus masuk ke Yerusalem. Mati bagi kita, di mana dalam perjalanannya itu, dia disambut oleh ratusan lapisan masyarakat. Maka kita mengingati minggu ini sebagai Minggu Daun Kudus. Nilai belah menyadik dalam Kristus, selamat pagi, selamat datang, selamat kita bertemu dalam sembiang kita minggu tau, minggu sembiang daun. Tajak pun kita nak uleh bertemu di gereja, dan kita uleh megak bersembiang dalam kita ingat, Tuhan Yesus kita masuk ke negeri Jerusalem, lalu disambut balam ayuh, ngena daun, kena sidok, Ngingat kena sidok ngayan ke pengagati sidok ke Tuhan Yesus. Nyalai minggu tu semiang kita di ulu ke kami dua din katedral kita din ko. So our service this morning, my dear friends, is led together with our din din ko of our cathedral. A very good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, dear friends. Today is Palm Sunday. During Lent, we have been preparing the works of love and self-sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today, we come together to begin this solemn celebration in union with the Church throughout the world. Christ enters his own city to complete his work as our saviour, to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Let us go with him in faith and love, so that, united with him in his sufferings, we may share his risen life. Let us pray. God our saviour, whose son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die, let these palms be for us a sign of his victory, and grant that we who base them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord and King, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of the palm. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, we pray you, these branches of palm, and granted as your people outwardly in their bodies to worship you, so inwardly in their souls they may serve you with pure devotion, that they may be victorious over the assaults of the enemy, and cleaves steadfastly to all good works through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May this palm be blessed in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Summary of the Law Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy and write all these your laws in our hearts. We beseech you. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all men. Together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardoned and delivered you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The collect, Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross. Grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 50, beginning at verse 4. The Sovereign Lord has taught me what to say, so that I can strengthen the weary. Every morning He makes me eager to hear what He is going to teach me. The Lord has given me understanding, and I have not rebelled or turned away from Him. I bear my back to those who beat me. I did not stop them when they insulted me. When they pulled out the hairs of my beard and spat in my face, but their insults cannot hurt me, because the Sovereign Lord gives me help. I brace myself to endure them. I know that I will not be disgraced, for God is near, and He will prove me innocent. Does everyone dare to bring charges against me? Let us go to the court together. Let him bring his accusation. The Sovereign Lord himself defends me. Who then can prove me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at verse 5. St. Paul writes, The attitude you should have is the one that Christ Jesus had. He always had the nature of God, but he did not think that by force, he should try to remain equal with God. Instead of this, of his own free will, he gave up all he had and took the nature of a servant. He became like a human being and appeared in human likeness. He was humble and walked the path of obedience all the way to death, 
his death on the cross. For this reason, God raised him to the highest place above and gave him the name that is greater than any other name. And so, in honor of the name of Jesus, all beings in heaven, on earth, and in the world below will fall on their knees, and all will open proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 21, beginning at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Matthew 21 As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with her colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him the master needs them. And then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophets had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise to David's son. God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord. Praise God. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is this? the people asked. 
This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the crowds answered. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Sisters and brothers, I hope you are seated comfortably at home as I invite you to dig deeper into our gospel reading. The story of the first Palm Sunday, when our Lord Jesus Christ walked, rode triumphantly into Jerusalem. I know you would rather be in church today to receive your palm crosses. On Thursday, we will be remembering Monday Thursday. Monday Thursday reminds us of the mandate that Jesus gave to his disciples that we are to love one another. Monday Thursday also reminds us of how Jesus our Lord instituted the Holy Communion. Something I know that many of us, all of us, have been missing these last four weeks. And I'm afraid for another one week at least. On Friday, we will commemorate the event of Good Friday. Our Lord Jesus gave himself up to die, to suffer for us, for my sin and your sin, the sin of the whole world. And then we come to Holy Saturday. And on Sunday, Resurrection Day, Easter Day, when we remember and celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, his victory over sin, his victory over death. And so the significance of this week, a week called Holy Week. Still, never mind, as good citizens, we comply with the order to stay at home. And hence, we meet online and worship God together. As our Lord Jesus Christ rode into Jerusalem, the crowd received him. The crowd celebrated. They were overjoyed. Hence, they did what they did. They tore their clothes, some climbed up on trees and cut branches and led them before Jesus, singing, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, they sang. They were expecting Jesus to enter Jerusalem to be their king, to overthrow the Roman government. In other words, they were expecting a political Jesus, a political king, a new order for them in this world. But God had other plans. Jesus rode into Jerusalem not so much to reign, but to die. And it is in dying for us it is in his death and, of course, in his resurrection that Jesus now reigns supreme as Lord, as King. Yes, Lord of Lords, King of all kings. That's our Jesus. And so the event of today, really, my friends, is an event that turned the whole world upside down. Now, you might say that what we are facing these last few months, and for the next month or two at least, the coronavirus pandemic is turning the world upside down. Indeed, it has, and indeed it will change the world for better or for worse. Many of us have found that our values have changed. 
our lives have changed tremendously. We are all impacted by it. Suddenly, to love, to be caring, means to stay away from one another. Suddenly, our homes become our prison. Suddenly, we have to change all our plans. Weddings have been cancelled, graduation ceremonies have to be postponed, and so on and so forth. Yet, yet, the event of this Holy Week, today, our Lord riding into Jerusalem, Good Friday, Him being crucified, buried, and on Sunday, Resurrection Day, God changed the world upside down. And so, what are we to learn together? What must we relearn together out of the event beginning with today, Palm Sunday? Well, first, let us remind ourselves again of the Gospel, Matthew chapter 21. This wasn't just Jesus' plan at the spur of a moment. No, his riding into Jerusalem has been prophesied. The prophet Zechariah, the prophet Isaiah, they both spoke about this event. And so in Matthew 21 verse 4, it says, this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. My friends, the plan of God, the design of God, the purpose of God, our God reigns forever. And so, in the midst of this coronavirus pandemic, yes, our God reigns forever and ever. Let's go back to our Gospel reading and dig deeper together. First, the people. We heard how they cut branches and laid them, how they tore their clothes and cloaks and placed them before Jesus. What is the significance of this? The palm branches represented goodness. It represents victory, a symbol of the final victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this victory is soon to be fulfilled when our Lord Jesus rose from the dead. In His resurrection, death is defeated. In His resurrection, eternal life is gained. And so we can sing together, joyfully, faithfully, yet humbly and confidently, death, where is thy sting? Death, where is thy victory? And so, the first thing to realize is that without realizing it, the people who received Jesus here, they were looking forward to the day of their victory as they were hoping for Jesus to come as their king, God says, I will come indeed, and I will reign supreme, not as you would expect me to. No, I will reign supreme in my own way. I will reign supreme, and not just over you as a people, not simply overthrowing the Roman government, but I will reign supreme on earth and as in heaven as well. This 
is our God. A God who reigns supreme here on earth in heaven. A God who reigns supreme over sin and death. And so as Christians, we can live confidently. And yet, as we are reminded in our epistle reading, to live humbly as well. The second, in the story we heard how our Lord Jesus, who was expected to be king, he came riding on a donkey. As we have said earlier, this was in direct fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecy from Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. We know in a biblical time and even today, the king, he would be expected to ride in, to come in, to make an entrance victoriously on a horse. Today, perhaps, a chariot of horses, or even a fleet of the best cars. But not for our Lord Jesus. The humble donkey was a symbol of peace for him. And so, Jesus, he didn't come merely to overtake, to overthrow the Roman Empire. He came as King of Peace. He came as the Prince of Peace. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9 reads, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Your King is coming to you, Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. This is our King. This is Jesus, the Prince of Peace. And so, even as we face this pandemic, even as we face the many challenges, the upheavals of life, we can believe, we can have faith, we can be assured that Jesus, our Lord, is Prince of Peace, and He reigns both in heaven and deep in our hearts, my heart and your heart. The third part of the story when the people were shouting Hosanna and hailing Christ as King. I want to remind us that the word Hosanna means save us now. Come, save us. Although the people didn't realize that Jesus as King, as Prince of Peace, King of heaven and on earth, their cry then is ours today. Come, Lord Jesus, save us. Yes, although they had a different thing in mind for Jesus, they had wanted, they had hoped for an earthly king, God gave them a supreme king. King who rule over everything. And you and I today may call. Yes, indeed, we can call upon this Jesus. Hosanna, save us now. Save us, Jesus. Even as we sing with them the words of Psalm 118 and verse 26. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. My friends, I know these are familiar words. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We say it at every communion, at every liturgy, as we gather together. Let us remind ourselves 
that these are more than mere words. These are more than just repeating the words even of those early disciples, or even the words from Psalms. This is us, you and I, proclaiming our faith in Jesus as we call upon the name of the Lord, as we bless God, God blesses us. As we call upon the name of the Lord, God is reminded of our name and of our needs. And so in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, the Word of God says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. The calling upon the name of the Lord, Hosanna, is a call to God for God to save us. And as we were saying last week, salvation, healing, if you like, to go back to the, words, the word that we used last week, salvation and healing is more than just the physical. Questions have been raised. I have been often asked, and perhaps you are asking, why is there no healing happening? Why is God not intervening and heal all those infected by this virus? Christ's mission, God sending him into this world, is not so much for physical healing. Yes, he can. Yes, he will. But the primary mission of Jesus the primary purpose of God sending His Son into this world, the world that God loves so much, is that we may have eternal life, the salvation of our soul, the salvation of our real life, of who we really are. And so let us call upon the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. God, save us. And we do this as encouraged by God's own word in Romans chapter 10 and verse 9. Let us confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Let us believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead. And by God's grace and mercy, we will be saved. The fourth part of uh, the story, the Gospel, for today, from Matthew 21, is Jesus continued to ride into Jerusalem. As Jesus entered, he looked at Jerusalem and wept. Yes, last week we heard how Jesus wept on meeting with Mary and Martha because of the death of their brother. Today, Jesus wept for Jerusalem. When he saw Jerusalem, his heart more than moved. He longed for Jerusalem to respond to God's love. And yet, we know what Jerusalem was going to do. Jesus was going to be betrayed, tried, and put to death on the cross, crucified. Jesus wept for those who would betray him. Jesus wept for those who would need him as their saviour. And this we can read from Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 42. As Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day, what would bring you peace? But now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus is saying, 
I and I alone can bring you peace. I and I alone can bring you salvation. My friends, Jesus, as he rode into Jerusalem, Jesus, as he looks around at the crowd, he is staring at us. He is looking at us. You and I, yes, standing among the crowd. And the eyes of Jesus, the heart of Jesus, is saying to us, I want you saved. I want you to respond to my love. Jesus is weeping for us, weeping for you and for me, longing for you and I to respond and say to him, Lord, save me, Lord, save us. Friends, let us not allow Jesus to continue to weep for us. Let us know what brings us peace. Let us know what brings us eternal life, salvation. Jesus himself. Palm Sunday, the event of today, also reminds us that the reign of God is far greater than any of our plan and expectation. Some of the disciples, and some of the Jewish people, as we had uh, heard earlier, were expecting for someone to fight their battles for them in this world. For the Jewish people, then, to overthrow the Romans. For us today, many of us would want Jesus to fight on our behalf for the short term, for our benefit now. It could be healing right now in the physical. It could be a boost to our business now. But it's all about the now. Jesus' ultimate sacrifice, his death on the cross, is not just for the now, the here. It is for eternity. It is for our eternal life. And so in John chapter 11, verse 25, Jesus said, remember the story of last week when Jesus confronted Mary and Martha. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. What hope we have. Salvation is ours because Jesus is our resurrection. And so even as we continue to journey with Jesus to enter Jerusalem on this Palm Sunday, even as we walk with Jesus through the valley of the shadow of death, the event of Good Friday, we can be sure, we can be certain that there is Resurrection Sunday, there is Easter, there is eternal life for us who believe. And so, in the midst of our crisis of life, in the midst of the bleakness that we often face, the many challenges, we have so much to give thanks to God for. We have so much to praise Him for, to be grateful for. In the midst of this crisis that we are facing, when many, many lives are affected, especially the poor and the needy, we made a small appeal for you to respond and help those in need. Many of you responded generously. God has been able to use this moment to allow you to be a channel of blessing, to allow us 
to be his hand and his feet, to be his mouthpiece, to show forth his love. And so I want to thank you, especially those of you who responded to our Lenten appeal. And should there be any of you who still need help, let us know. We will help as and when we can. As we continue to walk through this Holy Week, as we look forward to Good Friday, when the world is changed and turned upside down, Jesus, the author of life, died on the cross. The God of glory suffered the worst kind of punishment. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, was humiliated by sinners. Friends, let us also learn to live that upside-down life. In the epistle, in Philippians, we are reminded, let us be humble, be humble like our Lord Jesus. Yes, we have faith, we have a living God, we have eternal life assured, but let us not be arrogant. It is not my doing or your doing, it is the grace and mercy of God. Now, why do I invite you to live that upside-down life? Because the message of Good Friday is clear. It is only by living that upside-down life that the world will be turned right side up. Friends, when we are prepared to live the upside-down life, following our Lord Jesus Christ. It is only then that the world will see Jesus as Lord, as King, as our Saviour. It is then that we can testify and the world on receiving Jesus will turn right side up. And so it is time for us as we journey with Jesus into Jerusalem, it is time for us to rethink again, rethink about everything, and allow God to change us radically. Perhaps before this pandemic, our status, our bank account, our prestige, those have been the most important things. Our serves, our time, to the point whereby worshipping God, coming to church, has only been when I have the time for it. When I feel like it. Now is the time for a radical change. My dear sisters and brothers, when we look at the history of the church, even going back to the New Testament, the time of the disciples, this is their testimony. In Acts chapter 17 and verse 6, there were this group of Christians in Thessalonica, and there were detractors. There were critiques. There were people, a lot of people, who were not happy with this small Christian band in Thessalonica. And this is what they said of them. Acts chapter 17 and verse 6. These people who have been turning the world upside down have come here also. The detractors, the critiques, they were complaining. They were saying bad things about Christians because they were turning the world upside down. The poor, 
the little ones, the sick, they were all placed at bay. Nobody cared about them, but the Christians loved them. They followed their Lord Jesus Christ. You and I are called to do just like that. Jesus turned the Jewish pattern of life, even the understanding of their laws, their customs and traditions, and turned them. You and I too, we are called to a renewed life, Jesus-shaped life. And so, my dear friends, this is a different Palm Sunday, I know, but the message is the same. As we receive our crosses in two weeks' time, yes, we will be celebrating again as congregations in our churches, Palm Sunday, you will receive your palms two weeks after the lifting of the MCO. Let us remind ourselves that those crosses are not just leaves. Those crosses are not just palms. They are sacramental symbols, if you like. Remind us that the one who died on the cross was God himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And he said to us, take up your cross. In other words, take me seriously. Take your faith seriously. Let us do just that, my dear friends, so that this Holy Week will indeed be our turning point together. Let this Holy Week make us a holy people a people who live our lives for God, separated from this world, called by Him, designed for Him. Let us glorify Him. May this week be indeed a blessed week for you and all your family. God bless. In the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank the Lord Bishop for his great encouragement. At this time, shall we affirm, reaffirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed together? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us pray. Let us pray for the church and for the world, and let us thank God for His goodness. Yes, indeed, even at this difficult time, 
we have plenty to thank God for. Above all, we thank God for his great love for us for sending his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we remember today to ride into Jerusalem, to suffer and to die for us. We thank you, Lord. And so, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Hear now our prayers for your church and for the whole world, especially in the face of coronavirus pandemic, when the number of cases is continuing, the number of fatalities going up, worries and anxieties rule many lives. Help us to come to you, our faithful God, our almighty heavenly Father, to have only faith and trust and complete obedience. And so we pray for your church, your church in the service of Christ, that all those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We remember Melter, our Archbishop, all diocesan bishops. We remember especially your church, your people, who have missed worshipping together as members of your body. Continue to unite us in your love, O Lord, and continue to unite us as your people. Remind us today and always that you rode into Jerusalem for our sake. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. At this difficult time, we pray you to give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation in the ways of justice and of peace, that all may honor one another and seek the common good. We pray for the governments of the world, the World Health Organization, the different ministries asking, O Lord, especially at this time, for your grace and favor for those who lead in the fight against this coronavirus pandemic. May they put in place right and effective policies to bring an end to this pandemic. We pray too that they may be truthful in all their dealings and that people will respond in ways that bring about the common good for all, including compliance and adherence to the movement control order in place here in our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give grace to us, our families and friends, and to all our neighbors, that we may serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Father of mercy and grace, even as we feel missing one another because of the need to isolate one from another, we pray you to hold us together in love, in your care. We remember especially the poor and the needy, the elderly, 
who feel extremely lonely, the aged, the sick. Meet them, O Lord, make your presence real to them, and help us in the ways possible to meet their needs. Cater for their loneliness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind and spirit. Again, O Lord, we lift up to you the pandemic. We ask, O Lord, for you are our God, the healer. Come and intervene. Come, O Lord, and heal all those who are suffering and infected. Come, O Lord, and use the doctors and nurses. Come, O Lord, and use one another of your people to bring words of encouragement and healing. Above all, we continue to ask that you reign in all our circumstances as we pray you to give us your courage, your hope in the midst of our troubles. That together, as we accept you as our Lord and Saviour, we may share in the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hear us as we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. We remember our loved ones who have left us recently, or those whose anniversary of death falls around this time. We give thanks to you, O God, for their life, for whom they have been to us, and commend to you their repose souls. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. And rejoicing in the fellowship of the saints, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. The Prayer of Humble Access Let us pray. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another in the sign of peace.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We'll lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For He is your living Word, through Him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through Him you have freed us from the slavery of sin and given Him to be born as man and to die upon the cross. You raised Him from the dead and exalted Him to your right hand on high. Through Him you have sent upon your Holy Spirit and life-giving Spirit and make us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God, God of, of power and might, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through Him, accept our sacrifice of praise, and granted by the power of your Holy Spirit, this gifts of bread and wine may be to us His body and His blood. Who, in the same night that He was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to His disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this out of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, having in remembrance His death once for all upon the cross, His resurrection from the dead, and His ascension into heaven, and looking for the coming of His kingdom, we make with this bread and this cup the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Accept through Him this offering of our duty and service, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, fill us with your grace and heavenly blessing, nourish us with the body and blood of your Son, that we may grow into his likeness, and made once by your Spirit, become a living temple to your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, from all who stand before you in earth and heaven, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Lord, I'm no body. 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 The body and blood of Christ. the body and blood of Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and fit on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pause for a moment and let us be reminded the presence of God. Even though we may not receive the body and blood physically, and yet we know that he, he is in us and we are in Him. The post-communion prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. 
give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The blessing. The God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. Establish, strengthen and settle you in the faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you and your loved ones today and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
This is our goal. 